Welcome to the Rethreading Lives podcast, where we talk about how to take your threads of harm and through the rethreaded process, transform them into something that actually helps you reach your potential. We'll talk with different leaders in our city and our country and find out what they're doing. You'll walk away from listening to this podcast with useful insights and captivating stories on how you yourself can rethread your life and your business. I'm Kristen Keen, and this is the Rethreading Lives podcast. Welcome to the Rethreading Lives podcast. It is just me in a room watching highlights, and this is a different role for me now. So we had an amazing season one. I learned so much. I have no idea how many listeners we have or what people are learning from this, but literally doing this podcast is transforming my life. It is doing something inside me by listening to all these people who have gone through really hard things and how they've done it. And and I just feel like God is using the podcast to heal me. So I hope it's affecting you all. So what we're going to do is take um, a couple minutes and we're going to look back on season one and some of our favorite episodes, favorite moments. So I have my cherry Pepsi Zero which I love having a diet soda at about 2.30 or 3 o'clock every day. It's not the best habit, but it's a vice that I am not willing to give up yet. So join me. Maybe grab your vice in the afternoon, and let's do this. When you go to the jail and you speak to those ladies, I mean, you're absolutely pouring love into their hearts, and you may be the first person who's ever done it. Uniquely qualified. Uniquely qualified. It's just... It's just powerful to do our purpose and achieve our full potential, to to be willing to be honest because it's our responsibility to be our best selves because we can change so many lives around us, and that's what you're doing. It's worthy of the effort that you've put into it. Shirley is uniquely qualified. When she goes into the jail, she can go in there and have a platform that I will never have And she brings in her light. She brings in her love. She purposely wears bright clothes. And honestly, I really want what Shirley has. She is so full of thankfulness and joy. And she isn't, Shirley is not perfect. She's just as human as me. We both drive fast. We're both kind of impatient. But she has this deep abiding joy and love of people. And it is contagious. And I love being with her and learning from her. My brother hadn't talked to me for years before I got sober. It had been maybe three years. And then I got sober and I got to that process of like making amends and stuff. And um, he didn't want anything to do with it. I was leaving uh, Thanksgiving. You know, he still hasn't talked to me. We're coming up on about five years since I'd talked to him. He's my only brother. And I'm almost home. And the song, uh, Good, Good Father comes on. Mm. And... Right at the part where he says, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. This picture in my head of uh, one of my friends, it was one of my male friends, just pops into my head. And God just told me, I have given you a brother sufficient enough. We were talking about the long-term healing that our women, I'm not going to say endure, that they willingly go through to help restore their families back together. And she tells a story about how she couldn't be in relationship with her, her, her brother by blood, but that God gave her other brothers around her, good, godly men who were brothers to her, who would love her like a sister until her family had the time to heal. And she goes on to tell the story of how eventually her brother texted her back one time and was just like, hi. And then the next year it was, hi, Stephanie. And then the next year it was a whole sentence. And over the years, slowly they reconciled. And you need to listen to the podcast to hear the rest of the story. But I think I learned from Stephanie so much about the patience and healing, the time it takes, and how courageous she is and how much she she no matter how much it hurt or how much rejected she was she trusted and she trusted and she loved and she trusted 
and let God take care of her. It's just, it's so good. I lose about 15 pairs of earrings a year. Okay. I'm literally not exaggerating on this. I lose about 15 earrings a year. We just did, um, they ran a report for the best customers that we threaded. And I'm in like the top 10 of all customers because how much money I spend on earrings at Rethreaded. <laughs> if I was a good leader, does that mean I would stop losing earrings? No. I know I'm serious. This is a serious question because I'm just like, when I hear that, I'm like, I'm never going to be a good leader. So a strength is only, a strengths and weaknesses <laughs> are only strengths and weaknesses in context. In right? context. In the right place. In the, in the certain context. So. Yeah. There are some, there are some instances like I am incredibly absent-minded, uh, as well. And I'm very disorganized, but I'm very present in meetings. You know, I'm very present, but like the same, the same thing, which makes me absent-minded in organization also makes me incredibly present, um, in a specific moment with people, which makes them feel very seen and very heard and very understood. And I can usually think very quickly on my feet, which means I don't have to rely on the weakness of having to be tremendously prepared for something ahead of time <laughs> because I'm very quick. So like the strength and the weakness is just literally a matter of context. I'm still not sure about that, Stephen. <laughs> but I have been trying to do a better job in my life of finding my lane and finding my strength and living there, putting all my energy into there, stop comparing myself to other people and putting my energy into developing my strengths instead of beating myself up for my weaknesses. So that was actually a good moment for me. And I also value and respect so much my staff, right? Who just, I know this sounds crazy, but I guess we do a great job of, of taking care of each other. That just because I lose earrings doesn't mean I also lose respect. There's Many other things about my personality that can make people that are following me lose my respect. And yet I find I get stuck on the shame of the earrings and being disorganized. So still working that one out. Um, clearly it affected me because I'm still processing and thinking about it. There's a lot of plans that have been done about the neighborhood, like eight plans in the last 25 years. I was reading through one of the plans and when I get like a plan or some big doc, I always go to the front. Okay, who's at the table? Who's the advisory group or whatever? Who kind of put this together just to see who the players were? So I'm reading through this list of this plan that was done, I don't know, 20 years ago. And I'm looking at the advisory council for it. Like the second or third name is Harry Williams. <gasps> like what? I've been hearing about this plan. I've been, I've been talking about it. My grandfather's one of the people that helped. I mean, it tore me no. up that day. Like it wrecked me like. Way. I was like, I'm not breaking down crying in this office. Um, and then I later learned that he was the president of the first CDC, which is a community development corporation that deals with basically the work we do in some parts. The first one was founded in 1975, and my grandfather was the president. Okay. This is such a big deal. Travis shares in his story. He had an absent father growing up. His grandparents were a steady presence in his life. His mom was a steady presence, and he loved his grandpa. His grandpa was like the pillar of the east side. He was the how the, he was the one that everyone came to for advice, just like this rock steady of a man. And Travis looks up to him and wants to be like him, okay? Travis had been on this journey in life where he had gone to be a financial planner, made a bunch of money, very successful at a young age, wasn't satisfied, and through a series of events over, you know, 5 to 7 years, he ended up working for this organization, Lift Jacks, which is on the east side, which is the neighborhood he grew up in, which is where his grandparents were. And he was looking at this document, and this grandpa that he loved and admired was a pillar of the community, had started the work that Travis was trying to finish 20 years later. It still blows my mind. And it was Christmas Day at Rethreaded, and Travis is there. He's our board member. And we all went around the table, and we shared you know, our favorite moments of Rethreaded this year. And Travis referred back to that moment as his favorite Rethreaded moment. It was just so powerful for me to witness the generations before us leading us into justice and also a reminder of how much time it takes and what an honor this work is. If there's not joy in what you're doing, I think we need to sit down and look at it and see what's, are you feeling pressured? 
yes, there's procedure and codes, all things that we follow. We, the, all of those things are very important to us, but there should be joy in the journey. And I believe that there is. And to see the same person who really felt like they had to rush, 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 rush so that they could add value, realize that they were already adding value. And when you enjoy the journey, you're going to end up making far more, far better. Just to take your time, enjoy the journey. Speed comes in time. You know, some of us have been doing these things for two years, and yes, we're fast. That was never our goal. The goal was to do it right and enjoy the journey. Oh, gosh, it's so convicting. <laughs> it's so convicting because she's so right. And I am Kristen Keene, and I am not patient, and I don't like to take my time. And I am stressed a lot of the journey. And Lisa, this isn't just like a persona. Like she's now in development. So we spend a lot of time together. Like we've driven to Miami together. We've spent four days in Orlando together. And that woman, I learned so much about joy from her. She really finds joy in every part of the journey. Like we're setting up the kit and she's like almost singing in between customers. She's rearranging everything. She gets so excited to meet a new customer, a new donor, the possibility. And she loves the journey. And again, I am surrounded by the most amazing people on the planet. And I am so happy that she gets to be a leader in Rethreaded. She's now supervising three survivors underneath her. And I, I can't wait to see what happens to those women under her leadership over the next two years. It's going to be phenomenal. And so, Lisa, Carol, you are a treasure and a gift. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Season one, Rethreading Lives. This is my passion. This is what I love to do. I am so proud of all of our guests. I'm so proud to be hosting this. I really pray that you will listen to this and you can heal that there those parts of you that don't know your love, those parts of you that are still angry, those parts of you that still haven't let go, those parts of you that are stopping your own self from reaching your potential, I pray that they're healed and you can have a deep understanding of who you are because I believe that the world needs you. So thank you listeners for being on this journey and I'm looking forward to season two. 